Hello everyone, well, back to you to today's video. So we've got the computer back to uh, normal. If you didn't see uh, last night's um, final update for May Day Back on the Weekend, sort out all of the computer problems. Things are now running optimal again. Uh, it turned out that it was probably, I'm not totally sure, but it's probably uh, my antivirus software, Malware Bytes, uh, which is uh, got a, um, a rather dodgy update being sent through around a week ago, an upgrade. So I had to go to a beta version of my uh, antivirus software, uh, which apparently corrects this problem that is known uh, in some of their updates. Uh, and so that's got things uh, running uh, optimal once again. Also had to do a power down. Uh, and a reboot, uh, but uh, to get your know, new um, version, the beta version, to take effect. But the upshot is everything is back to normal. It's all running smoothly. So as we go through these tabs, uh, there shouldn't be any nasty white or black uh, screens and reloads going on. So hopefully it will all run uh, rather like clockwork. So in a Friday for our first uh, update today, you can do our month head look if it's going to take us just about to the beginning of June. I think we do uh, four weeks and uh, today will be the first of June. So uh, we just about get to the very first day of the summer of 2018. But essentially we're concentrating still uh, on May. So we'll see what these JMA and CFS V2 models have to say for the month ahead. Just save it later on this afternoon. We'll have a look at the uh, next week to 10 days with the GFS and the ECMDF bond so your week 10 day video update will be coming up uh, this afternoon. Um, over the weekend we've got, uh, of course it's back holiday weekend but we've got a lot of updates coming up we've got uh, weekend forecast tomorrow hopefully uh, we'll also be able to bring some analogs on Sunday as well as Sunday roundup and a historic video on back holiday money, I'll talk more about that uh, in the second video coming up this afternoon but we're going to start off, I uh, say kicking us all off for uh, the next uh, week Weekend for this weekend is going to be JMA Friday. So we're going to have a look at the 500 middle hour height anomaly uh, flow charts from the uh, Japanese Meteorological Agency. These are broken down into weekly pairs. Uh, we're looking at the North Pole view down first. So this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere just here. Middle latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are around uh, there. So blue extrapolates to uh, low pressure, yellow, orange and red extrapolates to high pressure. We're beginning with our uh, first week. I say these are broken down into week, weekly periods. So the first week will take us from today, the 4th, uh, through to the 11th of, uh, of May. So of course it is Star Wars Day today, uh, May the 4th, be with you. So we begin with the below average heights up to the north and the northwest for the week ahead. And then if we change the colour, we've got above average heights going on to our south and southwest. A ridge, a ridge is extending in across the country. That's jet, uh, sending the jet stream off up to the north. So we're going to the warm side of the jet. This ridge of high pressure will be bringing increasing amounts of dry and uh, warm weather too through the week ahead. That takes us through to week two, which is the 11th through to the 18th of uh, of May. So again, we've got above average heights to our southwest and also extending a ridge in over the British Isles. Below average heights are out to the northwest around Greenland and Iceland. That's where the jet stream is as well. Jet stream's going off up there somewhere. So a continuation of uh, a lot of dry and quite warm weather would be expected there from the 11th through to the 18th of May. And then we go through to weeks three and four. This takes us from the 18th of May through to the first day of uh, June. And look at this. It still looks like uh, we keep an anticyclonic signal going with an area of above average heights. That's high pressure centering itself almost over the top of the country. And then the ridge is extending to the north a little bit as well. Low pressure is out there and over there. So the jet stream is uh, going to be doing something. If this comes off, it'll be doing something rather like that, which places us still on the warm side of the jet stream. And you would expect a lot of dry and fine weather with that. Bear in mind, this is a two-weekly anomaly, so it might be transition. It may be that week three uh, still represents what is happening in week two. I mean, by week four, maybe we go into something more unsettled. You can never totally rule that out with a two-week 
temperature anomaly. But these are really good looking charts actually for uh, May. So it could be in for, it could be that we're in for something of a little bit of a classic May here with a lot of warm and uh, dry weather perhaps coming up. Let's have a look at the tropical and mid latitude view in terms of the temperature and precipitation. Uh, anomalies that go with those 500 millibar heights. So we've got the uh, British Isles just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. The North Pole, which is the view we're just looking at, uh, at from down, uh, that's up there, that's off the chart. So you can't see the North Pole uh, on this particular view. But of course, we've just looked at that. So we know the broad sort of uh, North Pole and Northern Hemispheric uh, setup. Um, so we find that for week one, we are going back to week one, first of all, this is the 4th through to the 11th of May. Again, we've got this big ridge of above average heights through the Atlantic and building into the UK and going to our east as well. That sends the jet stream off up there. So a lot of anticyclonic influences on the warm side of the jet and there should be a lot of dry weather too. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead are coming out uh, substantially warmer than average, not just for the UK, but for many parts of Europe as well. The anomaly is sort of, uh, say, one to three degrees above average, actually, for most parts of Central and Western Europe. So really quite a warm week uh, to come indeed. Oops, we haven't had a look at the precipitation. Uh, so the precipitation anomaly for the next week is coming out uh, drier than average. So a warmer and drier than average week ahead that looks pretty good for the start of may then we go through to uh week two this one takes us from the 11th through to the 18th with above average heights again over the uk and extending out into central parts of europe the jet stream is up there somewhere so again we're still on the uh, mild side of the jet stream temperature anomaly. It's not quite as warm as week one, but nevertheless still uh, above average for uh, week two from the 11th to the 18th of May with uh, many parts of Europe coming out average to above average with the uh, temperature anomalies. And then we have a look at the precipitation and again, because we're on the uh, mild side of the jet stream, we're shoving the jet stream off up there. It means that most parts of the country are coming out again with a rather drier than average week. And then we go through to week three and four. This one takes us from the 18th of May through to the 1st of June with above average heights still centering themselves over the top of the UK. So still quite an anticyclonic signal. Temperature anomalies, therefore, are still forecast to be above average. So if it's a warm May, if this is right, we'll be seeing uh, quite a substantially warmer than average uh, temperature anomaly. Uh, for uh, for May and uh, the precipitation that's still coming out below average so a dry and warm May is being predicted here nice end to the spring and start to the summer if this is right of course it doesn't necessarily mean that this carries on through the summer there have been many examples over the years of May being a very warm uh, summer like month and then it all goes horribly wrong as you get through into the summer so it doesn't necessarily guarantee anything for the summer but in its own terms it does look as though we're in for really quite a nice man if this is correct. That's a JMA though. So that's just one more. Let's see how the CFS V2 uh, compares. Again, these are 500 millibar heights. They're broken down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 4th through to the 10th of May with above average heights again extending through the UK, a large ridge from much of, covering much of Northern Europe and extending out into the Atlantic uh, as well with the below average heights, low pressure up there somewhere around Greenland and Iceland. And of course, what that does, it sends a jet stream to our north in that direction. So on the warm side of the jet, we're under a ridge of high pressure, a lot of dry and warm weather in the week here. We go through to uh, week two. This one takes us from the 11th to the 17th of May. Above average heights over uh, and to the east of the UK with below, average, uh, with below average heights up there and above average heights out in the central Atlantic. Again, the jet stream, maybe a slightly more influence on the jet stream there. Probably doing something a bit like that with the jets. That might be a little bit more unsettled, but still, nevertheless, a lot of dry and pretty warm weather uh, coming through with that. And then look at this. We go through to week three, which is the 18th, the 24th of May. And uh, high pressure is just dominating again. A big area of above average heights. Uh, low pressure is pinged in around Greenland uh, and Iceland. So a jet stream 
is going rather like that. And the upshot with that is that we'd be bringing in the air from an east or southeast direction. So that would be pretty warm and uh, still dry as well, I would have thought. And then week four, rounds it all up. This is a really good May. It's a very classic warm and dry May. If this is right, this is 25th of May through to the last day of May, the 31st, with, again, above average heights over and to the north of the British Isles, possibly bringing slightly more of a northeasterly influence to the wind. So maybe a little bit cooler uh, there, but really it's nitpicking and it doesn't look as well we are in for a really sort of classic May here with a lot of warm and dry weather ahead. If these models are right, because that's a caveat with any long range forecast, any forecast over around five days, actually, it does come with a big health warning. But if, if these JMA and CFSB models come off, then we really are in for quite a classic. Temperature anomalies for the weekend, the 4th through to the 10th of May, are coming out substantially uh, warmer than average, so no problems there. Uh, week 2 temperature anomalies from the 11th to 17th of May, they're coming out warmer than average. Uh, then we go through to week 3, temperature anomalies, no problems either there. That's coming out warmer than average from the 18th. 24th of May, so proper warm month if this is right, and then week four rounds it all off, going from the 25th through to the 31st of May, with again another substantially warmer than average temperature. Always all the time, much of Europe is coming out uh, substantially warmer than average as well, because this is a big high pressure that's covering many central and northern parts of Europe. So this is a real classic warm uh, May signature that we've got here. And because high pressure is dominating, you'll not be surprised to know that the uh, week ahead is also coming out drier from a, a drier than average of precipitation perspective. The 4th through to the 10th of May is substantially uh, drier than average. A little bit more unsettled in week two. I did say that from the height anomaly. It did look like the chest was just dipping down a little bit. So this is the 11th to the 17th of May. No real problems. It's not a particularly wet week. But obviously it's drier compared to week one. So just a little bit more unsettled there through the second week of May. And we have been picking up on that, I think, with the shorter range output. Uh, with short range output over the videos that we've been trying to do. been struggling to do them because of the computer problems. We have been doing videos through the week and uh, we have been picking up on that slightly more unsettled weather through the second uh, sort of second week of May. But then we go through to the third week of May, the 18th, 24th, and we're going back into uh, drier conditions again. Uh, so again, quite significantly drier than average for week three. And then we go through to week four, rounds it all off. And remember, week three and four with CFS V2 precipitation anomalies are normally very weak, very weak signals. But what we see here is that actually we have a strengthening dry uh, drying signal uh, through the second half of May. So, 25th of May through to the 31st. Again, that's coming out substantially drier than average. And uh, that's a very long way off. Normally, I say, the signals the week three and four precipitation with the uh, CFSV2 is very weak. So, this is looking like a real classic sort of May that we've got uh, going on here. Um, excellent looking charts if you like warm and dry uh, weather. We do get that little interruption around the second week of uh, the second week of May, so a little bit more unsettled then. But overall, we can't complain at all about that. So after what has been a very strange spring, we had a cold March, I mean a warm April, but also quite a wet April, uh, it looks like we're going into a very uh, warm and dry May, if these long range models are correct. Of course, that, as ever, it is the caveat with all of this long range stuff that uh, any forecast over around five days is subject to change. These models are subject to chopping and change. And whilst we have got good agreement, excellent agreement between the two models this week, doesn't necessarily mean that they're agreeing on the correct uh, situation. So we're going to have to wait and see. Obviously, the signals are very, very good here for warm and dry May. Um, but as I say, the proof of pudding will be to see exactly what happens. And I think we will get a little bit more of an unsettling interruption in the second week. So it'll be a question of how long that lasts. Does it only, these models, particularly CFS, only want that to last uh, probably no more than five days, maybe a week, uh, and then back to high pressure quite quickly. So we'll be looking for signs of that within the shorter range 
output from the GFS and the ECM? Will the interruption that we're going to get later next week, will that uh, just play out as a short interruption? And then we're back off and running into high pressure. Or will actually that take uh, longer to work itself out? That will determine exactly how warm and how dry May is going to be. But all in all, a very good JMA Freight to start us off today. Really classic looking charts. So um, probably one to savour. Right, come back this afternoon when we'll have a look at uh, the weather next week to 10 days. That's including the GFS and the ECM shorter range models, of course. But uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.